Welcome to O-State Daily. Casey Porter here. So glad that you decided to tune in. Fans, today we have a very, very, very special guest, running back, former running back for Oklahoma State from the years 2002 to 2005. Greg Gold joins O-State Daily. So, Greg, thank you so much for joining. Super excited to talk to you. For sure. Thanks for having me on, man. Okay, man, I wanted to start. I know I was I was reading a while back that, you know, you wanted your, your kid, your kid was playing football, to have some really cool-looking uniforms, so you came up with some helmet designs. Next thing you know, it becomes kind of a business for you. So talk about that. I know you live in Austin right now. Yeah, correct. And, uh, you know, there's no better or brighter orange to have than, than uh, Oklahoma State orange in Austin, Texas, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but, yeah, ultimately we wanted to look like the Pokes and uh, put together a bunch of looks. And, and as they would have, it would be what would uh, end up kicking off our, our company, and we have to slow down since. So, um, yeah, AU Concepts Designs, it was essentially created by that team, um, you know, because I wanted us to look and mimic just like Oklahoma State. And uh, sure enough, as fate would have, here we are. That is absolutely awesome. You mentioned Austin, Texas. You're actually headed from Austin where you live to Dallas. I've been on that I-35 stretch forever, and it's always like back-to-back, bumper-to-bumper, but yet somehow bumper-to-bumper, it's like everybody's going 90, right? Yeah, 100%. And, yeah, and then then they're not. Then it goes from 90 to zero in a matter of like two seconds. So there you go. Yeah. Okay, so one of the, the stories about you that, that I get a kick out of every time I hear it, and I cannot wait to hear this come out of your mouth, how all this worked. I hope it was yeah. worth it for you, by the way. Okay, because I've been in Bennett. My son lived in Bennett Hall. I mean, I've been in Bennett Hall. I think everybody at, at Oklahoma State has been in Bennett Hall a million different times. So when you hear the story, like somebody opened a window and snuck out, and it's like, what the hell, man? What? <laughs> right? Yeah. So tell me about the story where you snuck out. You got homesick, wanted to go see your girlfriend, yeah. snuck out, got caught, less miles made you run like you're a marathon runner, that kind of deal. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. So, yeah, what's, the, the, what's funny is people are like, wow, did you, like, drop a sheet to get out? I'm like, no, I lived on the basement. So, actually, I just had to crawl out the top, you know, of, the, of, the, of, the, of that window. And then, the like, what the, what the joke is, everybody's like, well, we were all going to meet up and go hang out. And because we all just like, I mean, we're two days and at this point in time, we were doing three days. They don't no longer do that anymore. Yeah. Right. But we, we were all and they're like, well, OK, cool. Well, apparently I was the scapegoat. And uh, so I got caught. I was the mule and everybody else got out. So, yeah, punishment was fun. I uh, miles. I thought Patrick was getting kicked off. He was like, hey, we're not kicking you off. Uh, we don't think that's we understand. You know, you get homesick. Things happen. Um, he's like, but your punishment, you're going to, you know, meet up at, meet up at the, um, at the facility at four 30 in the morning. And I was like, okay, God, you know, so I'm, I'm for sure. Like, Hey, we're, we're getting ready to like run and so the, the cows come home, uh, on the football field. And so sure enough, I wasn't expecting miles. I was expecting the, to be the, uh, um, the, uh, uh, conditioning coach. Um, and so I get there and it's miles and he's in his short shorts and, uh, he's like, you ready to run? And I'm like, yeah, let's go. And he was like, okay, follow me. And he starts jogging. I'm like, wait a minute. What, 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 oh, oh, we're doing this now. So, um, yeah, I'm in like my football turf shoes and I'm running with miles at four 30 in the morning through Stillwater. Um, I have no idea how long we're running. I have no idea how many miles I ran that day. I could tell you that it was a lot. And the entire time he's talking to me, asking me questions, completely unbothered or tired, uh, and if I didn't keep, keep up with him, I started slowing down. He's like, come on, Gold, we got to keep up. We got to keep up. We got to keep up. So, yeah, that was fun. I did that for five days, and by the day five, though, I was good. I was running with him. I was all right. But, uh, yeah, nonetheless, always never one of my proudest moments, but always makes uh, for a good story. That's great. And, and Les Miles, I think he was training for a marathon, both him and his wife, Kathy. Is that right? Yes, it was very clear that they that's and they were good at it. <laughs> <laughs> Way better than Greg Gold at the time. As good of a shape you're in, right? <laughs> and, and what I thought was my prime shape, I was I was uh, humbled by uh, by an old man. That's for sure. <laughs> so, what was it like to play for Les Miles? I mean, we hear all the stories, but he's a very inspirational guy, that kind of thing. But for Greg Gold, what was it like? Uh, man, it was Miles had a way of making you feel like you were you know, like on top of the world. And yeah. he was very much a player's coach. Uh, um, and I, I mean, he was probably not 75% of the reason why I went to the school, um, amongst other things, but, um, he was just a great guy. He was from Irving. So him and I had a very similar story. 
Um, well, I would say he's from Irving. He lived in Hackberry for a little bit when he was a tight ends coach at the Dallas Cowboys. And so um, that was something for me that was, you know, very similar um, uh, or very touching for me. Um, it meant a lot to me, and we could relate to a lot of things. And he was just a great guy. I, I loved playing for him. And um, some people, you know, um, they, they give him a little flack because of the way he left and all that fun stuff. But at the end of the day, I, I love playing for Miles. Of course, Mike Gundy, who the, the head coach now, obviously, he came back home in 2001 after stints with Baylor and Maryland, became the offensive coordinator. What do you remember about him way back when? I mean, he's the same old Gundy, you know. <laughs> um, you know, he was there the entire time. Um, uh, so I, I had both him and Les. Um, Gundy, I will say, um, uh, I, I, he was more of a player's coach. I think he was a little more, I mean, obviously he was hands-on just by, by sheer default, by being the quarterback's coach and the offensive coordinator, he was more hands-on. Um, and then once he transitioned to head coach, it was a little bit different, you know, that he kind of stepped back. Um, not bad, good, or indifferent, it's just the way it is. But I, I enjoyed Gundy more as offensive coordinator than the head coach. But, uh, you know, he's done a lot of good things um, with the program. And I don't think I don't think there's any other coach that elevates the program where it's at today um, better than he does. So uh, I think he was he's been absolutely great for the program. Um, again, people want his head left and right, but whoever they put in, they'll want the same thing. I, I I'm glad he's our coach and I, I really appreciate the things he's done for me and um, and for the football program. And I have no complaints with him. Very good perspective there. Of course, Irving, Texas, there in the DFW, you could probably see Cowboy Stadium from your backyard if you're close you enough to that. That's a parking you, lot. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. So you had to go through a lot of schools to get to Stillwater, Oklahoma, including OU, who was recruiting you. Missouri was recruiting you, BYU. A lot of great schools. Other than Les Miles, what were the reasons why you chose to be a Cowboy? Um... When so you, when you go and you take all of your official visits, um, you go you know with you know they, they pair you with certain people and certain groups that they think that you'll get along with. And um, I got along not only with the guys that they had um, hosting us, but um, guys like Charlie Johnson that ended up being my best friend. Um, Jonathan Cruz again, best friend. So that we all went together on our visit, ironically, um, the same time. And, um, man, we got to talking and all of us were from the DFW area. Three of us were in the same district at the time. And so for me, it was fun. I'm like, hey, guys, let's let's do this again. And uh, even linked up when we went back to DFW. And uh, for me, it was just uh, a very uh, warm family feeling. And then, which, of course, once you get to Stillwater, you get in town. Um, the people there are amazing. The town's amazing. Um, so the list goes on. But um uh, and then, of course, you know, at that point in time, the program, we felt you could feel um, uh, that Miles was bringing something special and different uh, to the program. And because of that, you, you, you wanted, there was a need that you want to be a part of it. And so that's why I went there. And you mentioned Charlie Johnson. Sam Mays also was on that offensive line as well. I believe Doug Bond was on that line as well. And so, I mean, you had some really good dudes up front. But I want to go back to Charlie Johnson. I've had a chance to actually watch him coach. And I think maybe he might be the most competitive human being I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, it's funny because um, if you didn't know him personally, yeah. you wouldn't think of that. Yeah. And then, then when you get to play with him and you get coached by him, he's he's very much uh, highly competitive. And um, you know, we were roommates. It was funny. Doug Bond, uh, Big Cruz, Jonathan Cruz, and Charlie and I were all roommates. So it was like the three of them and then me. Oh, really? And uh, and uh, boy, we had. We had so much fun. We had a great time. And, uh, you know, us, not only that, we, you know, we came at the same time, we had a very special bond. And, um, you know, I still communicate and chat with those guys today. And you, you mentioned, you know, just kind of the momentum you could feel Les Miles creating at Oklahoma State. I'm going to turn to my left so I don't leave out any names here so I can cheat. Dewan Woods, Julius Crossland, Jamar Ransom, uh, Vernon, Vernon Marinci, Lawrence Pinson, uh, D Mac, Daniel McLemore, Lance Carson. Paget McGee. That's a pretty yeah. damn good recruiting class you came in with. Yeah, don't forget Vernon Grant. Um, yeah, Vernon Grant. Came in, yep, came in the same class. And again, so Vernon Grant, uh, Macklemore, Bond, and um, I think there was one other might be missing. All of us were in the same district and played against each other in high school. 
So, um, oh, you know, we, was we, from that area too. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yep. For, yeah. Duncanville guy. And, um, and then, you know, then the following year you had XLK and, um, Tommy Devereaux. And again, it just, again, like I said, you just felt the energy that we were on the come up and, and special things were happening. And it was really great to be a part of that group and that class. You got to play with Tatum Bell, obviously at Oklahoma state. You got to see Tommy Devereaux in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Two of the fastest human beings I've ever seen. If in their prime they had a foot race, you might have seen this with your own eyes. Who wins that foot race? Uh, that's so hard. Because either <laughs> one of them could beat each other on any day, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm going to say this. For Tatum Bell to be moving that fast at that size was incredible. So, uh, you know, Tommy D, you look at him, the guy just looks like a gazelle. He's built like the one, you know? You, you expect him to run as fast as the way he does. But you look at Tatum Bell and – for somebody to be, you know, what was he, 225, 61, and move like that, that was pretty incredible. So I'd probably give a little more credit to my boy Tatum, but uh, nonetheless, both great athletes, both super fast. You still stay in contact with Tatum? Oh, yeah. It's, it's funny you say that. I do his helmet. The helmet's for his son. Okay, nice. Nice. At, uh, at, Her- at uh, Frisco Heritage High School, and uh, every now and then him and I will chat and kind of text with each other, and his boy's doing really well, and I'll share some video of my son, and he'll share some videos of his son, and yeah, so we, we still chat from time to time as well. He's like you. He, he's still very connected with OSU, very proud to be. I mean, everybody who plays at OSU is always proud to be a, an OSU Cowboy, but it just seems like it's at a different level with, with guys like you and Tatum Bell and all that. So, O2 that season that's the season where Rashawn is still open against OU right now uh, you remember that <laughs> Billy Badge and oh, yeah. I can remember him running across the middle against OU and running for those long post routes or whatever I think he had like 99 yards that game Josh Fields had a great game Les Miles was owning OU at that time I know you didn't get to play because that was your red shirt year but what you, what do you remember from that experience uh, I mean, there, it's just, it, it was funny because, um, so the year before they beat him, this is when I was a senior. Uh, and this was also a very special moment for me when Miles beat uh, OU in Norman. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was kind of like the icing on the cake. That was like, oh, I'm in. And um, what was special about that was after that game, I called my uh, Miles um, as a senior in high school, excited. My mom was telling me, he's probably not going to answer. He's got a lot. He's with his boys and he's excited. So he's, he answers the phone call and he said, Gold, did you watch that game? And I was <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> and so uh, I was like, that's why I'm calling. That was crazy. Awesome. You know, you know, congratulations. I can't wait to play with you next year. He was like, me too. He was like, we have more memories like this. I'm going to get, I, I got to get off now. I'm like, all right. And that was it. And so, um, that'll be a moment I, I don't ever forget. And, um, that same feeling when we beat him again, um, that following year, um, even though I didn't get, uh, um, you know, any action that year, um, it was still fun to be a part of. And, um, you know, it's, you know, Bedlam brings the best and the worst out of, out of, of that uh, that whole deal and so um ha- having to now be able to share that you know before the, you know, the split obviously with my son at games has been incredible i'm going to look to my left again because i don't want to leave out any names but it was just sure. the running back room that you got to be a part of throughout the span mm-hmm. of your career from 02 to 05 was absolutely incredible you, you're talking about we mentioned just a minute ago tatum bell seymour shaw which i got plenty of him when he is at shawnee in high school, mm-hmm. one of the most underrated backs that she's ever had. Vernon Marinci and then Mike Hamilton, who I think in 2005 took on way more criticism than he should have just for circumstances that may be. So, boy, you got to play with some great running backs, didn't you? Oh, yeah. I mean, and, and it continued from there. You know, then you, you know, after our, we have Dantel Savage and then you have Kennel Hunter and then, I mean – and then you have the Chubas and then the um, – uh, I mean, the list goes on. I mean – Oklahoma State does great at producing a back and a receiver. I feel like year in, year out. And so Tatum, my son Tatum, always asked me, he was like, what do you think Oklahoma State is, RBU or wide receiver U? And I'm like, it could be either. You know, the argument can be made for both. We do have a Heisman, uh, and we've had a Doak Walker, but we've had tons of Belindikoff receivers. So, I mean, I think they just do a great job of being able to produce both. Um, so yeah, it was, it was great to be able to play with those guys and then to see the, and then to continue to see the legacy of the running back position to grow after that. So I know you love Les Miles. He was your recruiter so many times, college guys 
you know, whenever they lose the coach that recruited them, that's a big deal because you don't know if the coach coming in is going to have your back or not, right? So that was a big right. blow to you. So, 04, I can remember it like it is yesterday. Oklahoma State goes to the Alamo Bowl, plays terribly, right? And we're all like, what the heck's going on? Then we find yeah. out, oh, yeah, well, Les Miles is going to LSU, yeah. right? That, that made it all make sense there. So what, what was that like for a guy like you, a player, that's in the middle of you, you still have a year left of eligibility, and you're having to deal with losing your coach? What was that like for you? Um, if I can relate that to like a child finding out that, uh, that Santa Claus doesn't exist when you're in college and for like a player, you've, you've, you typically, most guys have always had the same coach forever. Yes. And so in my mind, that's what I always thought that I would always have the same coach. And I always thought Miles would always be there. And there was just a part of the magic uh, that left me at that point, realizing, uh, or it was really at that point, the realization that, you know, the college football is a business and, um, and it sucks. And again, it's, it's a part of the business. It's the part of the, it's the way it is right, wrong, like it or not. That's what it is. And yeah, for me as a young kid, um, in college, losing our coach, my running back coach, I was really close with, um, you know, Larry Porter, he was quirky as hell, but man, I, I love the guy. He was, um, you know, he made me a better back and just a better, uh, you know, better player. And, um, you know, it was tough and it sucked seeing them going and moving on and us staying, you know, that kind of transitions into the next question for you. You lose less miles in 04 <laughs> and then 05 after Mike Gundy kicks off several guys off the team. Your last year at OSU turns into a rebuild. We're seeing that this year. Oklahoma State returned 20 guys that that have massive amounts of experience. And, and now they're dealing probably with what's another rebuild year here at Oklahoma State in their last year here. That's not what they came back for their last year for. So you kind of got to experience that too in 2005. So when you saw all the players get kicked off, you came to the realization, this is a rebuild year in my last year. What, what were those emotions for you like? Um. It was tough. And, um, you know, if I could, there are things that, you know, in life I regret. Um, and I, I wish I would have stayed probably me, probably my last year there, which I could have uh, played in, in 2006. Things happen for a reason. Um, but, um, but nonetheless, um, I think, um, transition's hard. It's very hard. Yes. Uh, and, but it prepares you for things in life in the future. What, you know, cause ultimately nothing, Nothing stays the same forever. Um, and so while it sucks when you're in it, everybody goes through it and it just sucks when it's your turn. And I, you know, um, you know, you watch Texas, you know, who wins a national title and then they basically go ghost mode for the last 10 to 12 years. And now, you know, they're competitive again and winning right. like they used to. And then, you know, same thing happened with Nebraska. They're still trying to find themselves. Same thing happened to Michigan. It's everybody's turn at some point. It just sucks when it's yours. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, Greg Gold, do you have a favorite memory or overarching just kind of thought when you think back to your experience at Oklahoma State that that sticks out to you so many um man so many um probably one of my favorite memories um was uh when we beat when we beat OU and it was my freshman year and um or really um I think at the end of the season um uh I might get emotional but um at the end of my um my junior year, um, when I felt like my retro junior year, when I felt like um, uh, I should have gotten more playing time, and yes, um, and things, you know, this is when that first wave came through. Um, Coach the Forest, it was like the same day was weird. Coach the Forest, um, JD Bray, um, Charlie Johnson, and then my mom. Uh, I just in my heart knew my last game that year was like, oh, this was going to be it. And so when it was done, all of them randomly that day just told me that they were proud of me and I had worked hard. And um, they said, even though you didn't have the season that you had, we're proud that you stayed and you you stuck it out. Because um, there were times where I wanted to quit, but uh, that's just not in me. And, um, you know, to have people that unexpectedly tell you that they're proud of you um, in one of your hardest moments, um, you know, it, it says a lot. And it's what continued. I mean, no matter where I went after that, no matter what, 
how mad or angry I get at OSU or upset. At the end of the day, I'll never not be a cowboy. I'll never not be proud that I'm a cowboy. And I don't regret ever encountering any of the things that I encountered other than maybe, yeah, having maybe a little bit better of a career um, at Oklahoma State. Um, you know, my wife and I are freaking obsessed with OSU. She cheered there That's a little awesome. bit after me. And so having to be able to share that with somebody um, and have them accept my psychoness for Oklahoma State football um, <laughs> is great. <laughs> Man, where did you get this mature perspective? I'm sh- I'm sure you've had it your whole life, but it's amazing uh, hearing it, you it, talk this way. It, it it takes you sometimes to, f- to get to forty. <laughs> <laughs> age, <You know? laughs> uh, age, age. I mean, while age doesn't always bring maturity, it does help you um, realize things and what's important, what's not important. And then um, when you chat with people that went to Oklahoma State, they remember you and um you know uh whenever you go into the water man it's a special place it doesn't matter if it's game day or not you walk in there and that town and you just feel good um and so for me um you know uh being able to live out what i did not not everybody can say they did that and um and so uh, i have to remember that and uh, just appreciate it all so we hear all the time Oklahoma State, especially the town of Stillwater, for guys like you that grew up in a big metroplex, the town could be a turnoff or it could be, you know, it's like there's no in between. It's either you, you, you go and it's like, like Mayberry and you're like, oh, my God, I can't believe a place like this still exists. This is absolutely perfect. This is where I want to be. Or it's like, wow, I mean, there's nothing here to do for guys that come from metroplex, right? Is that, is that true on the recruiting trail, you think? Yeah, you know, um, I mean, it's not everybody's cup of tea, and that's okay. Yeah. Um, and um, that's that's life in general. Um, I think um, the people that do go and do stay, they they always try to find a way to come back. Yeah. Um, and you know, I think that um, it's one of those things that, um, like like you just said, you either love or you hate it. Um, I don't know many that do. I mean, I have people, I have friends that go and visit Stillwater because they want to go watch their teams or whatever. And they make, oh my God, that town was a fun place. I don't hear too many people um, not liking Stillwater. I think what I liked about it, it was big enough that you met new people, small enough that you still saw the same people. Yeah. Um, and so it brought a lot of, uh, a very, it was kind of weird because at the time it was kind of a retirement town almost, you know, but yet it's in a college uh, town. And so it exists because of Oklahoma state, but nonetheless, you know, um, I think from a recruiting standpoint, if you're, you're going to a college town to look for, to be entertained all the time, uh, perhaps maybe your, your vision on that is skewed, but um, you know, everybody in that town loves you whether you lose or win. So it was great for me. I, I don't regret it. We've talked several times. You've mentioned your loyalty to Oklahoma State, your obsession with OSU. You mentioned that about it with your wife as well. If anybody ever wants to question that, all they need to do is go back and look how you defended OSU during that Sports Illustrated deal where all that BS came out about Mike Gundy, the program, right. and all that. You made it a point to get out in front of that as a former player and just just straight up call BS on it. So why was it so important for Greg Gold to get out in front of that? Uh, I mean, it's it's one of those things where, um, you know, the truth is the truth, right? Um, and so for me, whether I disagreed with how my um, career ended there, uh, for me it was important that even though it didn't work out for me, it was still a special place and still can be a special place for other players. And so I wanted to be sure. Um, I, I think what really bothered me the most out of all of it is when they acted as if, um, you know, Oklahoma State uh, was using the Orange Pride, um, you know, uh, they were sexualizing the, the OSU Pride girls. I, that, to me, really um, is kind of what was kind of the, the splitting edge. And then to see some of the guys that transferred and left, um, you know, that were disgruntled for whatever reason that it didn't work out for them. They were disgruntled. Um, watching them lie, uh, it just, I was like, no, nah, I can't let that go. And then, and then the whole, I mean, when the guy, his whole approach, I don't even remember his name. What was his name? Gail. I can't remember I, whatever his name was, but, um, his whole approach to me is like when I was on the phone with him, when he had called me, I was like, this is a, 
that you just want to take a shower. And uh, I was like, no, nah, we're not going out like that. And so um, for me, it was a it was a moment, a pivotal moment for me to stand up and do what's right. Not what could have benefited me for, you know, I don't know what. But uh, for me, it was important to be honest about my experience and what really went on with our school. Stand up, dude, right there, man. We're all proud of you as OSU fans. Trust me on that one, Greg. We really appreciate it. Hey, let's move on. Give us your thoughts on this year's team. I know you got to play for Mike Gundy as a head coach your last year there. So uh, it's been disappointing the last three games, but it is what it is. So tell us about this year's team. It's, it's weird. Um, we've, I mean, outside of injuries, it's, we're just in a weird transition with the NIL, yeah. with injuries, um, with what we thought was expectations with conference changing it is people don't understand it is quite a transition um and so yeah of course you know you want your team to win and don't want to lose and it's disappointing when they do especially when you know how much potential they have um honestly emotion i'm kind of all over the board um and so you know i don't I, i'm personally not going to put myself out there to call for coaches jobs sure i don't I, I, don't, I don't know what it's like to coach college football. I played it, but I don't know what it's like. And so, and I don't know what it's like now in the modern day era, dealing with they, what they have to deal with, um, with all the transitions that I just explained. So for me, um, yeah, it's frustrating because you want to see your team win. Um, and for all those guys that came back, it's, uh, for me, it's sad. Um, I'm sad for them. Um, the guys that could have left to go to the NFL and, and things of like uh, you know things of that nature and come back and play so yeah you know um but i'm positive i i, I was i would say this the future's bright I, I i would love to see zane flores back there um you know wing it um i know we've got some good backs coming in receiver core is always gonna look good um i just think hey give these guys a chance like i said we're in a rebuild it happens. It sucks when your team's going through it, but it happens to everybody. So, you know, that's just kind of where I'm at. Awesome deal. Let's circle back one more time before we get out of here, Greg Gold. I, I've got you 30 minutes closer to the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. So yeah, that's yeah. always a good thing in that traffic, right? So let's circle back around. Let's catch everybody back up with what Greg Dole, uh, Gold is doing nowadays. Yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying life. Um, I told my wife uh, when I turned 40 that I think for the first time ever – um, where I thought I would see my life, it's, it's, it's exactly kind of the way I, I planned it to be. And so I've got, like I said, mar amazing marriage. Um, I've got two beautiful children. I've got one stud that's killing it. I, I got one little mini stud that's killing it in the cheer world. Um, you, you guys will probably see more videos of that coming up soon once her season gets started. But um, I'm blessed. Um, you know, we just got into our new beautiful home in, in Lakeway and – um, we're blessed and I, a lot, a lot of people in this day and age in, in this world could say that. And so, um, business, our business has blown up and exploded. We've been able to change the game from a decal perspective, um, the way we market, the way we do things, how we design things. And so, uh, uh it's brought me back to the game of football. Um, I didn't necessarily want to be a coach, but this is the, the, the next best thing. Um, and so, um, life is good. And um, I'm truly happy. And, um, you know, all I need is a, a playoff team. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, and I'll tell you what, in this day and age, the transfer portal and NIL and all that, it's always great to have great people like you out there spreading the great word about Oklahoma State, isn't it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So and I always I, – it's funny because I have tons of coaches that I work with, and I'm really close with just about every one of them. And, uh, man, if I ever, like, see, um, you know, one of their kids commit or something, I'm on the, I'm texting them, hey, if they want to know anything about Stillwater, I can tell them how it was 20 years ago, and it's probably about the same, but <laughs> <laughs> tell them they can call me anytime. Greg Gold, thank you so much for joining O-State Daily. This has been just a wonderful honor. I remember watching you play like it was yesterday. It was a great time to be a Cowboy back then. So thank you so much. I, I took a lot of your time here, so thank you so much. You're great. Thank you so much.